This is uh this one's called this is Flashpoint. America, don't let them divide you. Mike Lindell, Sidney Powell, and Tony Suarez. So wow, Sidney Powell's on this. And um apparently the you know, the big word on the street has been that, you know, there there's a lot of neck biting going on in the in, you know, because Lindell just keeps bullshit. He keeps moving the goalpost, and these folks are pissed. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad uh, someone is noticing the workouts that I've been doing, even as I am currently under mildly under the weather. Um, so here we go. <laughs> Let's see. Don't let them divide you, America. Don't let them do it. And uh, how many? I, I mean, considering the title of this fucking thing. Um, how many people think that he's actually in his don't let them divide you America idea? He's going to be just talking straight to Trump supporters and painting anybody who isn't a Trump supporter as not just mistaken, but evil. Oh, the picture behind him is his Jesus lion thing. The lion and the lamb is the story. The lion and the lamb. When lambs lie down with lions is where they, and then this dude did this macho kind of, the kind of thing you'd see in like, if you found out this gym you went to was owned by a neo-Christian Joel Osteen follower, they, he would have this on the wall. He'd have, it's a giant fucking picture. Yeah, here we go. I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican. Hold on. Uh, hold, yeah. It's, hold they're on. wising up. And I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. I have 2,700 employees. He's been telling this story for a while, so I won't interrupt too much. We'll just blaze through it. But for the record, he yeah, he does care. He fucking well does. We're like one big family and they all can see the same things because we see it firsthand that these things don't make sense. When you look at that. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, I, I, I think, I think most of us, uh, if we worked at Mike Pillow's, um, factory and needed the job, I, I think a lot of us would feel comfortable going, Mike, I appreciate the job, but, uh, you're kind of full of shit, dude been watching your videos and you're a lunatic that's terrible you're just dumb i'm concerned for the the direction of the business if you were this dumb in your business decisions we you know we would be filling our pillows with rocks and razor blades what the fuck is wrong with you do you think that person would keep their job I understand everybody then pointed over here going oh we can't do that we can't do that did we forget about afghanistan people have short memories and that's what hurts that's why our biggest enemy is the media. We By the way, I don't know why this is choppy. They this is their cut, so I'm going to back up a little bit. Um by the way, if the thing he's referring to is we used to be at war in Afghanistan, we aren't anymore. Just in case you, you know, it's been a while. First hand that these things don't make sense. When you look at Afghanistan, everybody then pointed over here going, "Oh, we can't do that. We can't do that." Did we forget about Afghanistan? Be people have Yes, that's, yes. <laughs> yes, and people are like, uh, point over there, what about Afghanistan? Well, don't do that if we can. What about Afghanistan? Oh, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought it up. I, I, I would have brought it up myself, but I had already. What? Hurt memories, and that's what hurts. That's why our biggest enemy is the media. We have to keep getting the word out, like your show, like frankspeech.com, yeah. yeah. Western Journal. These places, we have to, and Sidney Powell's website. This is the most important thing, the stuff we're Yeah, yes, these are the sites. Uh, Sidney Powell's website, this dude's sound-isolated uh, closet that he keeps his victims in. Um, uh and by the way, Sydney, uh, I'm I'm gonna go with Zoom background. Or does she really have a jukebox? An uh, a I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a knockoff strap. Um, and like a viewing room. This very well might be where she lives. The environments these folks. And by the way, if you don't know, this is Gene Gene the Jesus Machine. If you haven't met Gene. Um, he's got a six head. Like tonight, we have to reach the people because let me tell you, I said this before in one of my speeches. Remember the what? Wait a minute, you're repeating yourself. When hair commercial and they tell two friends and they tell two friends and so on and so on. Well, when social media, and <laughs> well, well, that that's how we get everybody to get Delta, right? 
came into being uh, in the early 2000s or whenever it was. They told five people, they told 500, they told 50,000, they told 50 million, and so on. Jesus, the, the fourth person must be exhausted was they pulled it all back in. It even started happening before that, but they pulled it all back in where now it's you tell two friends and they tell two friends. But we're getting around that to where we're getting it back, where these other platforms that are coming up, where now we're going to get it back, where we, and it's up to everybody out there. You just got to work a little harder at it, where you tell all your friends. That's right. That, that's right. It's not his fault that he uh, um, created his own network, uh, Frank's speech is a complete shithole, um, technologically. It, Lindell TV plays, it, they're, both sites are exactly the same and have exactly the same shit that his social media site never came to be and that it's basically just two web URLs that go, that show the same shit. It's not his fault that he's cranking out crap and that my production value, thank you patrons, and super chatters and people who support and thank you guys for subscribing on twitch.tv um it's not uh it, it's not that i put the extra work in to like create this border and make this little box over there so that, i mean i yes do i have to expand the size of my studio and green screen eventually yes because i don't want it to look like i'm trying to pickpocket mike lindell every time i point at something um but considering what i'm operating with you know making this you know, in, in Photoshop, cranking out a PNG, popping it in, making my little Venmo thing, putting a little frame around it, a little little shadow around the edge of it to make it nice, giving a little texture um, to the box, which actually comes from the, um, the space shuttle um, tiles from, uh, from Discovery um, when I was at the NASA, at the Aerospace Museum, the one that Carl recommended I go to. I just added that in as a little bit of texture. It was kind of nice. Could he have done that? Sure. Why not? Does he? No. Because <laughs> he doesn't respect you. That's why. <laughs> you see this, it's you special. tell everyone you know about Flash. I'm sorry. I get, I spend so much time working on, uh, on this stuff and then I go like, these motherfuckers have millions of dollars and my shit looks so much, look at this chintzy bullshit. And I know for a fact they bought this off. This is all stock. You get your little logo. See the Flashpoint logo over there? You get your little logo and then you just pop it in. In, um, is it title blue or some shit like that? Hold on. This just aggravates me. Because again, these, these people get, people are sending them checks like hand over fucking fist, right? Um, uh, let's see. Title FX. I think I want to say it's blue, something like that. Um, yeah, Tyler Pro. Here it is. It's from New Blue FX is the company. This is the this is the thing. See, see how it works. And you put your own shit in there, and it get they give you lower, they make lower thirds and stuff like that. And then they do like you can they've got different setups where it's they got all this stuff and you sign up and you get there's total effects, titling, and this is Tyler Pro. Here it is. And then they give you you can buy these graphics templates. I have yet to do this. I make my own. You're welcome. Um, and they, you, know, you just get these like, so like here, like 60 bucks. A lot, they sell to a lot of churches, as you can see. Um, and you get all this stuff. Look, prime time template delivers cutting edge lower thirds for high end production, 12 network ready lower thirds designs. Explore product. Let's see, look, there's a knockoff Guardian of the Galaxy, the cinema collection, classics template. The highlight time, like they, you it, basically, that's what they did. Like, fucking Flashpoint bought one of these, bought one of these packages, and they put this stuff on there. And these, see that? Oh my fucking god! It's the same. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Pause. Back up. Um, this is the watch. Watch the thing come in at the bottom. There it is, round with the thing. Aha! You sons of bitches. $60, that's what they spent on their fucking Flashpoint. This is the, see the rounded edge of this? They just bought the next level up. They just added a fucking, you can add more backgrounds. That's the base and they just add stuff. <sighs> Jesus. Join the Flashpoint army at govictory.com. Fucking Flashpoint sign up. Jesus Christ. 
Army. I thought you were like Jesus friendly folks. The Western Journal, FrankSpeech.com, Sydney Powell's website. Praying, praying is great, but <laughs> dude, praying. Oh my God, did they just cut out where he was like, yeah, sure, praying. I guess this is a Christian show. Did he just say what I thought he said? Flashpoint, Western Journal, FrankSpeech.com, Sydney Powell's website. Praying, Praying is great, but you can help us all by getting people to these sites so they can hear. So they said, you know, don't forget to their prayers and blah, blah. Somebody jumped in or whatever, and they edited that. I didn't, I didn't do that cut. That's theirs. This is the clip they fucking posted. Yeah, yeah, well, prayers. <sighs> Holy shit. I mean, this Flashpoint's a, literally a Christian show. This dude's wearing a cross. They they call go victory because they were like you know, uh, uh, it's it's uh what's his name and he's a prepper too isn't he? Um, I know they do the um, Kenneth it's Kenneth Copeland's uh, he he's the one who opens this now he's the guy who with the big fucking it's this dude who uh, like yelled at the reporter because he's got a plane and she's like don't you think it's a little weird that a lot of your supporters are broke as shit and you've got a big airplane and he's like you know. It, that video went viral. Remember that? Um, there you go. Um, Texas pastor worth $750 million avoids annual one hundred fifty k tax on mansion. <laughs> this, is that, this is three weeks ago. It's two weeks ago, the story. He lives on a $7 million tax-free estate. Yep. There you go. And this is the defending of the lavish lifestyle. This is the woman, can, and he starts freaking out at her. Um, I mean, he's... He's a lunatic, but he's, he's, he's found a grift and it fucking works, but he's the guy who owns Flashpoint. Yeah. Holy shit. The picture on the right, which one? The, he's up here. Yeah. He looks like, he looks like kind of like an American Mr. Bean. Um, yeah, just totally gross, but he owns, he owns the, the network that gives you Flashpoint. Yeah, they, he pays for it. What's going on? Yeah, absolutely. You say so many words. What the f what what the fuck do you mean? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm I, I maybe that's just I've watched too many of these fucking things, but that's always the thing that sticks out. There's so many of these sites go. Yeah, totally. I agree. Totally, I agree. Like you can't. You have to automatically do that, or you're not allowed to interject. In a short amount of time, Mike, I, I'm just impressed. <laughs> I, I just sit here and I'm amazed. How does he get all those that words that in so fast? <laughs> it's I was, cocaine. I, I should have known. It was a pillow. So far, I mean, so far, hey, it sounds great. And, uh, the, I mean, the quality of the production is good and, um, the clarity of the message. Um, I, I mean, I would like to hear a little more from Sydney Powell cause she's, she literally peaks the meter on nutcase. I mean, nobody even can, even Mike Pillow has a hard time keeping up. One comment about that speech that Mike just gave. Yes. Just one comment. Go ahead. Yeah. One comment. Why'd you cut out the part where, and then go back, come back to him when he said, yeah, praying. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> All right. Let me grab the reins of this program back. Yeah. If uh, they go down this path, that's going to cut down what we do in when it comes to religious freedom, how we go out there, what you do with your meetings. Uh, you know, this, this seems to be, uh, it's unbelievable, yet we see it. Okay. I don't know what, it, they cut off what he's referencing. What the, what, I mean, does anybody have any idea? I don't. And right in front of our eyes, that this is even something that's being considered. I, I fly on average about 275,000 to 300,000 miles a year. Oh, I see. So this is probably like needing vaccine, uh, like to show your proof of vaccine to fly. Solely for the purpose of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to me. Oh, when are you going to start? This is an affront. This is an attack on my ability to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's well, no, actually, uh, I, first of all, I don't know why being vaccinated and teaching the you know the gospel of Jesus Christ are somehow um, diametrically opposed. Um, but you are in the same boat as uh, 
the Satanist that uh, got the mileage upgrade into first class that you're all angry about. You do realize that um, faith is not an is matters not on American airplanes. We don't uh, we don't give a fuck if you believe or don't believe or what you believe is none of anybody's business as long as you don't try to blow up the plane, freak out, or you wear your mask or you've been vaccinated. Nobody gives a shit. <clears throat> and by the way, if you need a flight, ask Ken Copeland. Onic and satanic, and I know we can't live in the past. But I really wish President Trump would have fired Fauci when he had the opportunity. I really wish Fauci didn't have. <laughs> because. By the way, um, what's going to allow people to fly without proof of vaccination is about eight weeks of Omicron passing through and more people having actually had it and having a robust immunity against a more virulent strain. That'll be what also takes the masks off as well. Much power and influence. And our ministry is prepared and we're exploring every option possible. It's unconstitutional. And I also think it's a violation of our... Um, no, it isn't. You can pass all kinds of public safety ordinances. You can get, If you don't want to participate in them, get in a fucking bus. There were no planes when the Constitution was written, you asshole. You can freely associate, but nobody owes you a method. Nobody. How you get there, it's, it's almost it, like this is the equivalent of saying, um, according to the Constitution, I have a right to bear arms. Therefore, I can only afford a revolver and the U.S. government has to buy me an AR-15. It is my, since it's keeping bare arms and currently that's the state of arms, I should be able to have whatever the newest, biggest gun available on the market is. And the government should provide one for me from the, uh, you know, from the distributor. Religious liberties. Well, one of my favorite sayings that Pastor Sam taught me when I started working with him, he said, while the world is waiting for Jesus Christ to come down, Jesus is waiting for the church to rise up. And that's where we're at right now. We need to rise up and do. That's right. Yeah. And you can't have the church rise up if they can't get on the airplane. That's what I, mean. I see what he means. Yeah. 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 Because God, you know, God, Jesus can't do anything if you're, uh, I mean, imagine if you lose your bags. Not give in. It really is the only hope, what Floyd said, is our only hope that's left is a relationship with Jesus. Well, it should supersede everything if you actually believe it. If you actually are a person of faith, you know, there's a certain give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And in this case, Caesar is demanding that you be vaccinated <laughs> if you uh, are could possibly be carrying a contagious disease to people who have like yourself who have not yet been vaccinated absolutely is and when when every um structure system mm. spokesperson tv pundit fails the the public and they don't know where to turn the church needs to make sure that we're f we're at the forefront ready to tell people that jesus still heals jesus still saves and he still delivers if yeah yeah, yeah. however uh, Jesus still heals, he still saves, and he still delivers. Um, it, it, he does heal by, through doctors, though, so you might want to go get vaccinated. Uh, yes, Jesus saves, but you're, you're, if you're going to want to set aside a portion of your income in a savings account if you want to actually have any savings. Um, and then, uh, what was the third one? I've, I've lost track. That Jesus still heals, Jesus still saves, and he still delivers. Oh, he still delivers. Yes, that's true. He still delivers. Um, but, uh, but I mean, you're going to want the Amazon app if you want to know when your delivery is on the stoop because you, you, don't want to, you don't want Jesus to deliver and have some rando asshole in your neighborhood steal Jesus' delivery right off your stoop. You were one of those churches that... Er yes, he is... Jesus is the it, Jesus is the postmates of saviors. John, in this, you know, March 2020, you, you were being real caught... Uh, people, people are asking what this is. This is uh, this is sound dampening material because uh, obviously he's in some sort of like horror dungeon that he has because 
He's a part-time youth pastor, part-time uh, villain in a Criminal Minds episode. So maybe you, you close down for a few weeks. Oh, okay, I Jesus. think everyone understands the, uh, the it was just such an unknown back then. We get it. But we, we should have enough wisdom and discernment to understand where we're at. The church cannot close. It cannot shut down. We're the only hope the world has. Um, nobody's shutting down churches. There's not even a premise that they're going to. I mean, I, I get it. There's a lot of money to be made on the idea. Yeah, it's a soundproof sex dungeon. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of money to be made in trying to convince people that, you know, that that they're going to they're gonna shut down churches. You better get here while you can. I certainly am not above that kind of marketing uh, when it comes to stand-up. Um, by the way, um, I, I do have an announcement I can make, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, let me, and I want to make sure that I've got it right before I... Whoop, hold on. Why is this dude not working? There we go. Oops. Shrink, you silly man. Um, let's see. G yeah, so... Um, oops, hold on. Last minute. Oh, something else is coming in. One second, one second. I'm checking my messages. And then there's something that came in just as we we're talking about it. Uh, last one, oh, um, give me a second. Might be heading a, uh, when is this? Jan Friday, Saturday, January 21st, 22nd. Um, that's fun. Uh, all right. So I guess I'm going to be at Cobb's. If they, if they, if it's still a yes, this just came through a couple hours or like an hour ago, um, January 21st and 22nd, I will be at Cobb's comedy club. Um, I guess that's a Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Let's see. This just came in. So, uh, I just got an offer for this. That's fun. So yeah, uh, San Francisco, Cobb's Comedy Hit Club. It's one of my favorite clubs in the whole world. It's where I shot uh, Escape from Alcatraz. Um, love that place. Just told them yes, that I would like to do that. Let me shut this down. And then um, also, um, uh, um, Tuesday, January 18th, the same week, right before then, um, it's a long drive. This is brand new. So I just, just came in San Francisco. Be good. That'd be lovely. Um, January 18th, Los Angeles, uh, with the whiskey, a go, go, um, ultimate jam night is coming back. And we, uh, after a long hiatus. And so, uh, I will be hosting that show because Paulie, who normally hosts it will be out of town. He's got a gig in Argentina. So I will be singing at the Whiskey. Um, I'll do probably, I think we do four or five shows at the top of the show. And then I'll do a couple at the end. Um, and it will all be about like, I think we're doing like Get Back and Keep on Rocking in the Free World. And a couple like Welcome Back from COVID for that one. And then the next one, which is February 1st, um, that they're going to do Ultimate Jam Night. Uh, Nerd Halen will be performing because it's, it's going to be our Eddie Van Halen tribute because we didn't get to do one when he passed so i will be uh performing with nerd halen there we're gonna do um yeah we're gonna do like yeah we'll do a couple i i will talk about which songs we're gonna ultimately do i think we'll go we'll do one we'll do nerd halen and nerd hagar we'll do one of each because it's a it's about eddie and it's about his entire oeuvre Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco, 21st and 22nd. If they say, um, yep, it's locked in. He just, I literally just said, uh, just agreed to it right now. So the 21st, 22nd, um, how can I shred like Eddie? No, I cannot. But my guitar player in Nerd Halen can. I sing in that band. So I sing the David parts and the, the Hagar parts. We just added Top of the World to our set, and I'm very excited about doing it. Yeah, and Can't Stop Lying will we'll work these in, but these literally just hot off the presses. It's nice. It's going to be nice to be back at Cobb's. 21st and 22nd of January, I will be at Cobb's Comedy Club doing stand-up. It's a Friday and a Saturday night. 
The Tuesday before that, I will be in LA at the Whiskey doing stand, uh, doing uh, music there, singing, and uh, it's going to be a good time. It'll be nice. Be it'll like it'll be very cathartic. I think because all the songs are going to be about, you know, I should do Freedom uh, uh, by uh, George Michael. Got to give what you say. That'll be fun. Um, we'll figure Freedom. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll they're they're floating some songs right now. So I my only request that I made when they asked me um, this week was, uh, can we do a, a, a song off of Kiss Unmasked? <laughs> I thought that would be appropriate. I'd love to do Shandy or uh, probably Is That You would be the one I would want to do. But it'll be me, Chuck Wright from Quiet Riot and his own solo uh, project that he's doing with Whitney Ty, um, which is just coming out right now. They're just finishing it. And then uh, the, the regular house band and a lot of guests and stuff. It's going to be very exciting. They, I don't know if they'll be um, live streaming it or not, but um, but yeah, so excited about these. That's really nice that the, while I was literally checking the date on to make sure I got it right on the Ultimate Jam Night, um, and um, and if, if CSL, if you want, man, I'll put you up in a hotel that night in, in LA and uh, just so you can come into town. Like, it'd be lovely. I insist. We can do all this. It'd be good. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, gigs coming up. And then, of course, uh, Nerd Halen's going to be on the uh, Monsters of Rock cruise. War Machine's a great song. It is. Do we Richie Haven's Freedom? Yeah. Uh, why would a white supremacist trust Hershey Walker and his Hershey... <laughs> Hershey Walker and his Hershey Love Isaac. There we go. It's a, yeah, so these are nice. That's that's cool that that just came up. Anyways, back to our current madness. Uh, we either believe what we've told people we believe or we don't. We... Um, uh, I, I, wait, wait. Huh. You don't. You don't. You're, you're, you're a fool and a false prophet. I don't, you know, very seldom do I question people's faith because it is a very personal thing. But these assholes sell it. And, I, and they don't act it at all. Like, they don't live their values at all. So, they they don't practice what they preach, and so what they preach is bullshit. Period. Is he in a cell? One could hope. Know that Jesus still heals. So, so in the last five seconds, I want to say, everybody, don't live in fear anymore. Great things are coming in 2022. Hey, I'm, 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 I, I, I agree, Mike. And none of them have to do with anything you've said coming true. Seriously, one of the best things about 2022 will be that uh, it'll be a yet another year where everything he has said turns out to be complete bullshit. Optimistic all the time, but this is, I'm over the top optimistic on this because it, think where we would be if we didn't have all the pieces to this puzzle. Like Sydney said, right. it's just, wait, it's on God's timing, not your timing, not my timing. Yeah, this will all work its way out in... Tens of billions of years. Apparently, you know, God created the earth in uh, in six days and on the seventh day he rested. Of course, the, in the uh, Hebrew, the word they used was yom, which means a period of time, a span of time. So for, you know, in human time, that could have been 4.7 billion years to build the earth. And then he could have, about 2,000 years ago, right after he sent his son down to wave at everybody, take it, started his nap. And so he could be sleeping for the next billion years. So they're just, a, we're in a kind of God-free, we're on our own, kids. Gotta start acting like we actually value people. Right? Um, so yeah, this could be the time while God has rested. He's just missing this whole part of it. <laughs> it's all coming soon and it's going to be amazing. We were, we are in. And, uh, and by soon, he means give or take 15 billion years. Greatest revival in history. Yeah, we are still in the seventh day. Uh, Boone just uh, blew your mind. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. Although, according to Gene Simmons, on the eighth day, God created rock and roll. So I, we may be past it. I don't know. It depends. But then, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I, I would have to check Gene's notes. Amen, Mike. I agree. I believe that too. All right, Sydney, you got 30 seconds. Yeah, I I believe that. That's why, I mean, because it helps us. It sells stuff because people are bailing out. I get yelled at every time I walk to the fucking car. 
Wrap it up. God did not give me a speech. Hold on. Wrap it up. That's not how you start her off. You sure are pretty, lady. Tell them what's up. Come on. Tell them what time it is and what time I could be there and stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to ask Sidney Powell out on a date. Because <laughs> I, let me, I, I just want to like get a good uh, grip on her. Like it's a Sadie Hawkins dance with that jukebox playing. Well, I have had the time of my life. And I never felt this way before. Yes, I had. It's the truth. And I owe it all to you because I the fear. Knew it. People Come often on. ask what makes me tick, and it's really my faith. I, it is. That's what makes her tick. That, you know, obviously a, a, a rather sound regimen of, of, uh, of medications. And, and that one particular facet. Uh-huh. But then God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of love and, and joy and of a sound mind. Well, Gene, there is. Yeah, I, I think it was a good. Uh, hey. Why'd you cut her off? At the last couple minutes, didn't you run back to this youth perv? This, this dude in the soundproof booth who ain't even on the game show yet. Dude, answer. At, I want to hear it in the form of a question. Power. In the name of Jesus, and I want to encourage everybody here for the next few days, every time you feel like cussing, yeah, I, every time you feel like you get upset and you want to complain about what's going on, uh -huh. rather than say, yeah, if you, hey, fucking hell, I'm with you, man. Tell, Speak your shit from your truth. Just say, there's power in the name of Jesus and start speaking that name. There's fucking, just, just say there's fucking power in the name of God. Jesus, God damn it. Like that. When you speak that name, you speak healing, you speak joy, you speak life, you speak prosperity. You speak delivery. Like if you say, Jesus, Lord, I ordered something on Amazon and my payment method was declined. Please, bing bong, holy shit, check the stoop. Oh, it's the revenue again. Get me my double burr. So let's just speak that name over everything we're upset about and watch the... Yeah, you know what I mean? Because that's what Jesus is really about. Kind of using his name like Smurfs do with the word Smurf. You know how they just drop the word Smurf in everywhere? Like they use it like verbal spackle. Every time that, man, he's Smurfy, this, this meal's all Smurfy. Something smells really Smurfy. Hey, who Smurfed? Go Smurf yourself, you Smurf and Smurf. You know how they do that all the time? Basically do that, but with, but with the name Jesus. But don't take it in the name of vain. Whatever you do, don't take Jesus' name in vain. Just use it in lieu of swear words. It's great advice. I never really thought about it till now. But that's brilliant. I, I, I mean, obviously, this looks like some sort of weird um, psychedelic uh, mugshot. And uh, I'm not going to play patty cake with you, buddy. I'm just not going to do it. Because first of all, nobody would hear it. That kind of defeats the purpose. Secondly, go smurf yourself. Power of the name manifests right in front of our eyes. Uh -huh. Amen. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everybody. Special thank Yeah. Uh, wh why would I want to see the episode unedited? I think those cuts were perfect. I think we all learned as much as we're ever going to learn. And I like the fact that they cut in mid-sentence and out before the punctuation. That's really fucking smart. I feel so much closer to the message of Jesus Christ. You, yeah, you smurfing son of a smurf. You.